If I was a terrorist and I wanted to destroy the American way of life, I wouldn't use planes and bombs to kill folks. Hell's bells, that's too risky. You might get caught or killed or both. Real terrorists get results. And then they lay the blame where it can't be found. But too often, Washington has failed to show the same kind of leadership. That will change when I take office. My presidency will mark a new chapter in America's leadership on climate change that will strengthen our security and create millions of new jobs in the process. That will start with a federal cap and trade system. We'll establish strong annual targets. Sustainable development has become the popularized expression for Agenda 21. Agenda 21 is the 1992 United Nations Rio Declaration on the Environment and Development. It is the agenda for the 21st century you're living in today. For a brave new world where everything that you cherished and held true will no longer exist. Agenda 21 defines itself as the comprehensive plan of action to be taken globally, nationally, and locally by organizations of the United Nations systems. Now's the time to confront this challenge once and for all. Delay is no longer an option. Denial is no longer an acceptable response. The stakes are too high. The consequences too serious. Sustainable development is the philosophy designed to bring human beings across the globe under the full control of a narrow human elite. This is a book called Ecoscience. This is a cookbook for the extermination of humanity. To provide a high quality of life for all, there must be fewer people, says Holdren. He says you could do this by putting chemicals in food and water. He wants to have licenses for birth. What happens to people that are born illegitimately, meaning without a birth permit? Compulsory abortion. Think about that. He even writes about infanticide. In order to enforce this, he talks about a supranational monstrosity that he calls a planetary regime. And once I take office, you can be sure that the United States will once again engage vigorously in these negotiations and help lead the world toward a new era of global cooperation on climate change. It's a 40 chapter document to basically control the world. It's based entirely on socialist control mechanisms. Sustainable developers have designed a global movement coordinated through a global to local action plan to create world government in accordance with certain objectives. The drinking water of 4,000 Brisbane households has been affected by Australia's worst fluoride overdose. It happened a fortnight ago after the North Pine Treatment Works was shut down for routine maintenance. On the 1st of May, 300,000 litres of drinking water with increased fluoride levels ended up in household taps. There had to be in a number of um, safety devices and control mechanisms which had failed. When the North Pine treatment plant shut down for three days at the end of April, extra fluoride was pumped into the pipes. When the plant was turned back on... That slug of water that had the high fluoride in it mixed with the unfluoridated water and was then discharged into the system. Normal fluoride levels are set at one and a half milligrams per litre, but for a three hour period, 4,000 residents of Warner and Brendale got 30 milligrams per per litre in their drinking water. That's more than 20 times the recommended level. Any adverse health outcome from it is remote, if indeed not zero. We'll tap nuclear power while making sure it's safe, and we will develop clean coal technologies. This investment will not only help us reduce our dependence on foreign oil, making the United States more secure, and it will not only help us bring about a clean energy future, saving the planet, it will also help us transform our industries and steer our country out of this economic crisis. Take this assertion from a few years ago. The government lied about inventing the HIV virus as a means of genocide against people of color. Governments lie. Now, under the glare that's gotten Barack Obama into such a deep political dilemma, Reverend Wright is asked, do you really believe that? Have you read Horowitz's book, Emerging Viruses, AIDS, and Ebola? In the 1996 book, Emerging Viruses, Dr. Leonard Horowitz wrote that HIV was introduced to gay men in New York and blacks in Central Africa by a U.S. government-sponsored hepatitis B vaccine, a program of genocide, Horowitz claims, designed to reduce the world's population. 
Holdren says that the optimum world population is one billion. The implications of his belief structure and his world outlook are genocide. Horowitz claims the Centers for Disease Control came up with one of the strains of the vaccine and then helped cover the scheme up. Contacted by CNN, a CDC official points to government-sponsored research that identifies a subspecies of chimpanzees in Western Africa as the original source of HIV. This is a widely held theory among medical researchers. But Reverend Wright cites another book that has more historical support. Have you read Medical Apartheid? Based on the Tuskegee experiment and based on what has happened to Africans in this country, I believe our government is capable of doing anything. The Tuskegee experiment was a government-sponsored program started in the 1930s to examine the spread of syphilis. Men who already had it were not told and a cure was withheld from them. President Bill Clinton apologized for the program in 1997. It has been asked many times how uh, the people who are perpetrating these things expect to do this and make it last. And the answer to that is that you steal a generation of children and you indoctrinate them so that they accept these ideas and they become global citizens in the coming global village. Reverend Wright also supports a theory from one researcher on how white and African-American children have different ways of learning and thinking. The theory that kids with European origins have a left brain cog from which they learn by observing objects, and that African-American children are right brain oriented, learning creatively and intuitively from people. UNESCO came out and declared 2005 to 2015 the decade of education for sustainable development. But they go on to say that it will encompass the 40 chapters of Agenda 21. That is your federal national curriculum. The entire purpose of second grade social studies is to transfer loyalty from the family to the government and teach them about sustainable economic consumption. Students construct their own understandings of reality and realize that objective reality is not knowable. So why bother? The truth is the truth which keep men free is being suppressed in order to prop up the attitude training agenda. Stopping climate change won't be easy. It won't happen overnight. But I promise you this. When I am president, any governor who's willing to promote clean energy will have a partner in the White House. Any company that's willing to invest in clean energy will have an ally in Washington. And any nation that's willing to join the cause of combating climate change will have an ally in the United States of America. This means a world empire, a supranational, one world government that would attempt to control all details of human life. This is an ultra Hitlerian genocidalist who's today operating out of the White House in Washington, D.C., and it's time to kick him out.